on fire right now. And but interesting, um, EG just straight up picks Puck first. Oh, and Nyx, oh my god. <laughs> the hero so so annoying to play against. What about him? He counters like half the hero pool, like all the intelligence heroes. Oh yes, mana burn that burns mana proportional to the intelligence of the hero getting targeted. And then Carapace, like you just like Puck presses Q and you press Carapace and Puck's dead. That's it. All night so. Well, I'm curious about this Puck first pick. I mean, let's assume he's mid for a moment. Would not be surprising to see him go elsewhere. This is I think it, I think that's a poor assumption though, because that's why <laughs> e, that's why EG picks him first a lot. It's one of their it was their common opener, and then it was straight banned every single time first phase against them for like a month because they would run off lane and then push with Drow when you thought you had a mid puck countered. So actually, didn't they? Yeah, that's the draw ban. Yeah, have puck in position four or five. Or something yes, like they that? had a position five puck as well. Yeah, yeah. Disregard that line of thought then. <laughs> so you see Drow and Lycan being removed both here. Um, Drow being removed by Empire and Lycan by EG. Interesting. Well, when uh, anyone has Night Stalker, Lycan becomes a very viable hero. As you get more nighttime, Lycan and becomes stronger. Does and it I surprise you that EG were the ones to ban out Lycan? No, be nice because Lycan. It's, it's fine for Empire, I think, to pick it as well. I mean, it doesn't matter who has the Night Stalker. Yeah, and Empire has the first pick after the four bans, so they can actually steal Lycan from EG until they ban it. Oh, that's the Nickman again. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Puck offlane. They're already banning like two of Universe heroes. Yeah, I mean, the Enigma. Such a strong hero for Universe. Empire Always has. Oh, Faceless Void Ban as well for EG. Yeah, combos with it's a pretty sure. He's also one of those heroes we did see Rezo play, mm. was it yesterday, uh, and where he did very well on that Faceless Void, and, you know, he carried that game pretty hard, and yeah. they're probably scared of that, especially in combination with the AE, like you mentioned. Yeah, and that game was so impressive to see. I mean, Resolution kept number one net worth the entire game. I don't even think he died, or if he did, it was only once. He didn't, I think. Yeah. Just yeah, he rushed Lincoln. Mm -hmm. It's one of those heroes that has like whole, nice impact the whole game, and then he carries later on. I think there's an increasing likelihood that we'll see TA. TA hasn't seen much play, but that's because Nyx has been first banned every single time, and now that Nyx is in the in the game, like Invoker, Qua, Puck. Like, a lot of these mid-heroes just, you can't pick. Or you can't pick and expect to do very, very well in the game. Ember also, like, just most of the mid-heroes. I think TA actually matches pretty well versus both of these heroes on Empire, too. Yeah, that's an interesting observation you bring up, that Nyx Assassin has been one of the most influential heroes on the mid lane, just honestly kind of chilling nearby. We've seen Nyx Assassins getting mana burn at level one in a lot of those matchups. Yeah, you played against you. You played against that yourself, didn't you? Against yeah. was it secret? I've been a big team of the Nyx Assassins W. Yeah, it doesn't feel so good. Oh, it took the beam. that's tough. Yeah. This is kind of to counteract the Night uh, Night Stalker Vision game from Empire here. Mm -hmm. It's a good hero. It also allows you usually to kind of push, um, kind of go five man sort of early on, and then rendering Night Stalker kind of useless. On There's top of that, profit. let me go for it. And Veno AA is a great combo. Exactly. That yeah, is uh -huh. terrifying as a core. <laughs> Just the absolutely massive damage from Venomancer's poison abilities, particularly ultimate plus AA's, AA's ultimate. And, the, and they have the Icy Vortex. And then Veno usually builds Veil too. It just compounds. Yeah, once your BGBs are five seconds, and unless you have some sort of summons and stuff to push base, it's, it's, it's really difficult to push base against that. Nice call to Motto on the Nature's Prophet. I don't know which team did the uh, earlier. It was Night Stalker, Nature's Prophet. Oh, I think it was uh, LFY, and they just homed. Mm -hmm. EG also has run this before with great success in group stages. They might go for like Clockwork Sankey. Ten seconds remaining. So you think Nyx is going to be offline? Five seconds. No, I think Sankey off. Sankey I think like way? they don't have enough setup for like, anti division. Mm. Or they could just like pick Ember now. What position do you think Venomancer will be run in Team Empire? Definitely Kyrie. Oh, it's been again. Hello, Resolution. Welcome back. Could it be a mid Venom, maybe? 
Yeah. Likely. It's pretty strong. Pretty stable. Yeah, because I don't think that you you don't really want to give that Venom Sir to resolution. It, it doesn't. It's not like it's not really that type of hero that that carries the game, so to speak. Five seconds remaining. Also, was it Team Secret that ran? No, excuse me. That was Team Liquid that ran Venomancer in mid against Team Secret, opting to avoid getting the wards early. Just make sure that the Gale was maxed out first. Shadow Shadow. This also kind of makes sure that EG don't really want to go for that TA anymore. It's it's kind of unlikely at this yeah. yep. that you go for the TA into Sven and Venno, Sven with the Warcry, and then also all the AOE like damage over time from Venno. He's a pretty strong laner. He's like a mini Viper. We saw like no one do that stuff. He max Gale, and then he has like push all the enemy. He press Gale, and the enemy has to run. Yeah, and especially I mean, if you have Gale with Night Stalker, oh gosh, is that such a vicious combination? We've seen Razor a few times to counter Sven. I'm trying to think about RTZ hero here. Yeah. There's not too many others. Hopefully not PL again. Yeah, and Empire actually do have <laughs> last pick. <laughs> yeah, who are who are the carries still available that Arteezy might run in this position? I think it's the racer. I don't see any other option. So there's no Void. There's no Lycan. I think it's really hard to play Razor against AA. Yeah, it's not a nice game. But they could just like last pick a nice strong oh, laner and then go they, aggro. They could pick AM too. They do AM versus Venno. AM like against Sven though? It's playable. Mm, yeah, it's nice. There's not that many options, right? Not many things left. Wyvern again. This pick it like it counters the Sven directly. So at this point it looks like Evil Geniuses is waiting for pick five for Arteezy. Yeah, I mean I could see they could go kinda all in and do some sort of Bone, like some clinks or something. That's that's not Arteezy hero. We haven't seen it in a in a while though. Mm. Ooh, that would be fun. I would love to see clinks. He creates a lot of action in the mid game, running around invisible. These heroes, like this AA and uh, some of those, like Venomancer potentially can they can die very easily to that hero. Yeah, they definitely don't have good mobility at all and are extremely squishy. They also need a pipe though on EG. Just, they're gonna bat 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 rider. They don't bat bat rider could be bad. Yeah, Batrider's lasso, obviously great at snatching Nature's Prophet, who tends to have weak mobility. A little tough to play versus NS, though. Yeah. Hey, Batrider, nice call, and... Oh, terrible. That was an insta-pick. They're confident. All right, when in doubt, go to the Terrorblade. What about Terrorblade fits in here? I mean, obviously there's Sven, who's great against illusions in general with his cleave attack. Why Terrorblade here for EG? Does it fit into the fact that they want to do a push-heavy lineup? Fits for multiple reasons. Seconds. Yeah, he, I think he pushes very well. He, uh, can't, he's one of the few heroes that can also heal up from AA and Venno. Yeah. Uh, I think Weaver and Terrorblade are the only, they're like the two main cores that can still get their HP back. But mostly, I think, because it fits into their push quite well. He can kite the spin. Kind of nice, too. They're still LC. LC Empire picks a lot. Especially mm. now that the Terrorblade might be okay. Yeah, yeah, I think LC is pretty nice. But not good versus Winter Wyvern. Ever. Yeah, that's the only problem. But it's good for the summons. I don't know. It's kind of a tough call here. Only 15 seconds left for Team Empire with their final pick. And already they have a pretty nice setup to just make sure that resolution can be comfortable. Are they going to random like Newbie? <laughs> oh, right. Ah, Marana. Okay, let's go. That's a mid Murano. Oh. Wow, FN. So is this the off lane? Is it Venomancer off lane or the Nyx? Yeah, it's Venom off lane. So they're taking kind of a page out of. Was could, it uh, Liquid? Could they aggro around that? They could. They could potentially try that. Yeah. Is jungling viable still? I haven't seen I haven't any. Seen any <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen in a while. <laughs> I think jungling is pretty bad now. Well, at this point, the lineups have been locked in. EG, one game away from elimination. Empire, one game away from top eight. Let's head into game number two of EG versus Empire. Who thought we could potentially be in this position, Cinder? And Evil Geniuses, one game away from being eliminated from TI7. I know the crowd here will have something to say about that, but so will Team Empire being one game up so far. I'm not going to say a convincing performance, a long performance, so a typical Empire performance. You don't think they were convincing in that last game? I don't think it was uh, one-sided. 
compared to the games we were looking at yesterday, like this was a little bit more where potentially EG had a chance to come back. Yeah. And it wasn't a complete shutout. But I definitely say Empire had control. They, I think they dominated for minute 25. But you're right. For the first part of the game, it looked like a pretty close game. Now we'll see in this in this game if, if Evil Geniuses can come together better, play their lineups advantages a bit better. And this time around, at least they won't have the vision problem. This time they have the nice stalker. Yep. There's no bad rider in the game. There is a Nyx, which is like a wild card thing because. Uh, Nick's support, I would say in general, has had huge success this tournament. It's good against Pacific Heroes in this game, but I, I do consider Night Stalker a pretty good matchup against Nick's overall. The silence is very annoying. If he sees you on top of a sentry ward at any point, he can actually just almost, and almost solo kill you, but at least set you up for a very easy kill for your team. Um, once again, though, I have to question a little bit. I'm not sure about this, this Winter Wyvern pick again. It, it seems a little bit out of place. It's being picked into three or four magic damage heroes from Empire. Um, it's good against the Sven, sure, but does that really uh, does that give the hero turn the hero into a good pick? I'm personally not the biggest fan of this of this choice. I think the rest of the picks uh, for EG are, are good and make a lot of sense for what they want to do. I'm interested to see if it's we'll also it a pick together. up to try and counter against some other potential options. But then again, like the ancient apparition from from Empire kind of counters almost everything that EG was potentially also thinking about jumping into. I'm thinking about what's happening with the Alchemist pickup. If it was going to come in straight up Deep Warden, so EG will at least have a safe lane vision advantage. And Crit could be the first one to spill blood, even though it's a poor, innocent ward. Damn, this, it's been a long time since I've seen this. Night Stalker without wings. That's... <laughs> I don't know if we actually have that uh, with the Observer. We're pretty sure they do. I think I saw it on their on their monitor. He's uh, he's been clipped. <laughs> he's a house bird now. This he's night stalker. An old bug. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's 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 currently missing his wings. So uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You've been clipped. Resolution. Actually, Universe had a really wonderful play. He just locked him into the edge of a tree and did did a good 200 damage and forced Resolution already burn one Tango. And it wasn't even the hero. It was just the trees doing the work. Zaya's gonna try to come in and contest the rune, but Ghost Dig is there, will actually skill Gale. They do have Arrow on FN as a possibility as Crit's well. In. He doesn't and Roger's connecting. He doesn't have Cold Embrace uh, here for Crit, so instead it's just the Arrow. Zai, real issues for him, and FN will take the first kill. Bringing down Ninth Stalker. That was an interesting mission. He didn't have an Observer Ward, it was just Boot Smoke running across the river. Maybe Courier Snipe. It's very unusual for uh, for support to be killed. At least it has been in this tournament. The the Venero's positioning was excellent there from Ghostic, and they had the right heroes at the right time to make that kill happen. Now, he did have to skill Gale. This will make him a bit weaker in this lane. Arguably, he would like to have Poison Sting going up against the Terrorblade. This good sustained magic damage harassment can give him an advantage, but at the same time, it's also one on two. I'm wondering what Ghostic's going to do here, if he's going to be able to get some good experience or just get shut out. He's, he's going to get body blocked up by Crit. You can taunt all you want with bananas, but you've just slipped on the peel, trying to run away from that Metamorphosis Arteezy. Has to go down the river, but Arctic Burn just came back off cooldown for Crit. There goes your Gale, but Zai, remember where this guy was. Body blocks him up and allows Crit, in fact, to get the last hit. EG will get something for their safe lane, but some mail, real issues in the mid, back under the tier one tower. They don't have mana burn, it's the impale, they trigger off the south, the damage from FN is enough, one last arrow from the mounted ranger, able to reach behind the tier one tower. Really nice plays from both teams, that body block from Crit was beautiful, that was a three or four second full body block that he managed to pull off, and it was necessary for Zai to connect. And at the same time, they get this connection in mid, and for once, Nyx skilled stun level one and not mana burn. And <laughs> that's because they went for that first blood. And it did probably, I, I didn't see the play itself, but it was probably a connection with uh, the impale into the arrow of it was. SN being able to set that kill up. So, And he still gets level two now, so the, the hard life for the intel here is in the mid begins again for Samael. Uh, needs to have his bottle, but for the moment, he's only bringing out the healing sound as well as the circle of the universe. Resolution. Oh, there's not much more they can do to him apart from remove his life, but that's a big thing when he's only got three tangos left. And crit. Okay. Tries to juke it in the trees. Moves back up again. Has to take flight. Does not have a TP scroll, so Ghostic and Roger will be hunting this support. He buys boots, crit, and he can afford a TP scroll as well now, but that means at least he doesn't lose any gold, but he'll lose his life under the tier 2 tower to Ghostic. Nice level 3 up for this Venomance now. I think uh, Crit was hoping to snipe a courier, but it's not in use, else his positioning there makes absolutely no sense. He's out in the middle of nowhere, but no courier to be found. Empire get themselves a freebie. Fortunately for Crit, like you said, almost no gold lost. He managed to buy up his items at the very least. So Did he get the bounty rune? He didn't get the bounty rune there either, right? No. Or maybe? I'm actually not sure. Uh, maybe he, 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 he was passing through the neighborhood. He may have gone. 
Uh, Universe got Bounty Rune, Posh got Zai, and Crit all got the re recent Bounty Runes. So I guess Crit did get that one. Yep. Oh, okay. Ghost Dick, Zai, and RTZ. Now we're trying to get rid of the Plague Wards. They're only level 1, so they're actually quite easy to deal with, so easy CS on the top lane. Uh, this Invis Rune of Maposhka mm. with a lava combination, and the bottom is one way to do it. Even though Resolution doesn't have the war cry to allow him just to dive underneath the tower, he still has the Storm Bolt, which synergizes nicely with the Cold Feet. And this they can get that bonus damage from the Chilling Touch, which was early leveled up by AA. This is one of the strongest dual lanes in Dota. I think Sven AA is really powerful, maybe only really surpassed in terms of kill potential by something like um, Wraith King AA, which is Smoke arguably coming. even better. Crit and Zyme making their way towards the mid lane. FN's the one who's a very long way up underneath the tower. He wants to come up because it's a double creep wave there. Samael can turn to try and fight. Universe will join in. And now you're seeing the power that can come with an Aegis Prophet on your side. Four heroes being brought, but that power still needs to result in the kill. The bottom charges from Mirana will not be enough for FN to survive. And Samael will be the one to claim the, the scout. Ooh, that was close. It's important for EG to get that kill. I think that was a 5 damage kill or something like that. 5 damage overkill. Else FN would have been able to bomb again and actually survive that. So EG, by the skin of their teeth, they get that kill. And now they're going to look to be more kill hungry. This is a level 3 Night Stalker with a Haste Rune. Still without wings though, so he's kind of uh, looking very funny here at nighttime. <laughs> they're coming in towards mid. He has, this, he has the silence. He's got a 1-1-1 one, one, one build, so they can get the silence in FM, but already the leap. Very but quick to get him away, saw that... That Splinter Blast flying through the trees at him and just leaps away quickly. Ghost takes level 4, by the way. This is the lane I want to have a little bit of a look at because offlane Venomancer is pretty unusual. It has been played a couple of times, but um, to me this... Uh, Might look at a little oh, bit later. Yeah, bottom wait a lane, Maposhka and Resolution. They're surrounding around. Go for the easier kill. That will be Maposhka. The stun being thrown onto the melee creeps. It actually hits the eye, but it's still going to be the death of Maposhka. Actually, at the hands of Zai as well. So, Venomanta. Another good start for EG, similar to the last game. I guess his uh, mouse disconnected again here for French. Mouse, yep, okay. Stop throwing him. <laughs> so, okay, this gives us a little bit of time to talk about the Venomanta. Um, when you're playing core Veno, I think some of the big levels to keep an eye out for is level 3, when you get the 2 in Plague Wards, if that's the build you roll for. It's generally every point in Plague Ward, apart from level 1, changes the hero a lot. Ghostic, if he feels like he has a hard time top, he can just go jungle. He can jungle all of his camps, even including the Ancients when he hits level 5. You can farm on those Ancient camps. Probably want to leave them, leave them for Sven, though. Um, and in addition to that, the sustained harass that he has against this Terrorblade, if, if they bring up some additional help, Arteezy can be threatened a lot. Speaking of threatening bottom lane, once again, Zai is in a very good position. He's trying to wrap around the back, but... As Nature's Prophet just found out, you want to sprout resolution, you still got the Quelling Blade, you can still cut three. And with Nyx Assassin with a 1 1 1 build, sitting behind resolution plus Maposhka, it doesn't really look like they're looking for any kind of engagement. They're going to try for mid again, it looks like. EG. Yep. Oh, FN's Wait, like gonna F he yeah, has the shrine. He has the shrine. He should be okay here because TP at three generations good. There goes your TP, and there's no one to stun. The void was already used from Zai. Meanwhile, Universe dies on the bottom lane. That rotation to mid forced EG to take their reinforcements off that lane. Roger, perfect there at the right time with Maposhka to get the kill. You know, Resolution doing a good job to not die before this. This lane, in my opinion, is very difficult for Nature's Prophet to deal with. Just the sheer kill potential. He's going mid now. So, okay. Get some you, push going. You die, hit into the tier 1 tower at mid. FN has been having a harder time. And Samael is dream coil and double damager. And he would love it if Empire engaged into him. He's ready to fight. Night Stalker is a little bit far away though. He's looking for an opportunity to top. Zai does have stick charges. He's going to get spotted by Plague War. Very nicely placed here from Ghost Stick. And he will close in on his level 6. This offlane Veno is getting a lot of space. This is a dangerous thing to do. An offlane, like a safe lane Veno is normally trouble enough. It's that very quick levels. We even saw the hand of Midas Venomancer earlier today. But with Venomancer, once you hit level 10, your experience just comes so quickly with that plus 30% gain. Yeah, looks like he's planning to go treads into Force Staff. Force Staff is a very, very good item against both the Puck and the Terrorblade. You simply need to create distance between yourself and these targets of PG. Bottom lane crit. Could get scary here. Yeah, right back behind his tower, but Roger will clip him off. And there's no Arctic going for. They're way too deep for this. EG. 
Not going to force a rotation. Right now, they're still using that double damage rune of Samael to bring down the tier 1 tower. So they're looking for a trade off. Arteezy tricking Metamorphosis once more. So he's beating the tier 1 tower on the top lane. So a lot of tier 1 tower trade offs. Empire try and take the bottom. Arteezy forced to fight Ghostic. I say forced. He's actually quite willing to do so. Dropping the Venomancer down, but he has a try and he can, he can utilize. Oh, Boposhka. Can't get out in time. Samael wanted to go and join that fight, but he, hit, but he got hit by an arrow from FN in the mid lane. Top tower is it's going to be the phase boots completed for Zai. Unfortunately for him, it's at the end of the night time. This is the pr number one prioritized item that we see Night Stalkers get in this patch. Uh, more or less just rushing it. Maybe a magic stick or a range off in between, but that is the go-to. Just helps a lot with uh, being able to cover distance with Hunter in the night. It makes you a bit more useful at daytime. You don't feel completely useless. Uh, getting that extra damage in is very nice with the attack speed you get from Hunter in the night at night time is such an extreme value point. 45 attack speed from that makes the phase boots hit really hard. Uh, but now it's day, so Night Stalker has to chill for a bit. Might see Zai take a lane, get some levels, or go pull. While the pressure keeps being put on from both sides. So Arteezy is having a great start this game on the Terror Blade, that's worth mentioning. He will be getting very farmed but was forced back to base here by Ghostix. So that consistent harassment is starting to play a role in limiting Arteezy's farm. Well, he's had to burn so much mana to stay up on that top lane. Yeah. It's, it's the harassment is pushing him towards the tower, so there was a time he just had to retreat. But we'll regen up, TP back up to the top lane, and then it's a rinse and repeat. In 35 seconds, he'll assault the tier one tower, and more than likely this time he'll kill it if Empire can't stop him. I don't think they're going to let him, though. I think they want to fight for that tower and maybe sacrifice their bottom one. This bottom tower will be hard for them to defend against this, uh, these Treant scouting. Uh, the potential rotation of the Puck is excellent for fights in that area of the map. Uh, but we'll see. For now, it's just Universe starting to push down this bottom lane, and there's no real contesting from Empire. It, look, it doesn't even look like they're just going to sacrifice this completely. All of them are moving away. EG with a good ward at the Shrine. We'll see the AA conceding this area. And yep. should mean Empire are going to cross the map and try to do the same thing on top. Everyone's seeing everything. Everyone can make really good choices. Even the Observer Ward watching Arteezy farm. And allow the Nyx Assassin to understand exactly what he can get away with. And allow Ghostic to start pressuring into that tier 1 tower. Send an illusion in, just drag the creep wave off. Arteezy is not given the opportunity for Empire to really attack in. Instead, they're trying to force the rotations, having Universe beat into the tier 1 tower on bottom. FN's Invis Room might help them turn this fight around. But then again, there's only one of them here. There's no other help. Resolution's farming up in the small triangle jungle of, of Empire. You got a big stack there. Oh, Zai. Oh, Zai. There's your void. He hasn't finished the job. FN had to leap himself away. Universe gonna stay on the run. Crit trying to get in front of him as well. He's got Splinter Blast off cooldown right now. Doesn't have anything to really bounce it off. And FN with 8-1 charges. Decides it's not worth it. Zai, get the hell out of there. Face, face boots and around the trees. Under sub 100 HP, Night Stalker retreating from the fight. And there we go with the tower trade. So, top tower goes to Ghost Stick. Still working on that force staff. He's halfway. Samael will pick up the veil here. So, a lot of damage is now available for EG. Might want to look for a fight. But as was pointed out by Tomato, this, this next assassin is a dangerous matchup when. Now that Roger gets his level 6, he's actually immediately going to TP bottom and use his Vendetta. He's going to look for a kill straight away on this Nature's Prophet, who, by the way, also has a bad matchup against Nyx. But a perfect time to TP out. So Great read. Bad matchup, easy if you have that mobility that comes from the TPs, be it from his scroll or his natural ability. And he's, just going, for, he's going for Orchid first after the drums phase boots. So, looking for a straight up silence, who do you think it's actually meant to focus on? Is it the Venomancer control? It's good against multiple heroes in this game. I think targeted silences are very difficult to deal with for Nyx. They have Night Stalker and the Orchid then, uh, and even the Puck Silence to work with. Orchid against Mirana is outstanding. Uh, and like you said, Venomancer, if they can prevent Venom from getting spells off in the fight, they've already come a long way in terms of having uh, the, the advantage. So, EG. Next smoke movement. There's still no They're looking for resolution. Crit. That they really want to kill on resolution. That dire observed ward has already revealed the fact that he's farming up the ancients. So Puck will come in first. They need a quick silence on him. And well, not actually happening. He'll get the storm bolt onto the crit. And it may be enough damage. The Dream Call actually grabbing goes to Wrath of Nature, bouncing through from Nature's Prophet, gave him a little bit of extra damage and universe the kill. But EG are happy with what they got. They're getting the hell out of there. Keep resolution down. Key kill. Roger. If he can get this done, he can synergize with that. Actually, FN doesn't have arrow. It's three seconds before it comes back off cooldown. 
but he's watching Zai very closely through the trees. The stun will connect. Here comes your arrow. It'll only be a two second stun, but two seconds may be enough. Stick charge is available. Night nice Stalker cannot get up into the air and away. Pretty unconventional build from Roger here, by the way. Well, maybe not so much, actually, but it looks like he went 2 1 2. I like this build a lot over the 3 1 1 just because of the Spike Carapace ability to set up your Impale. Maybe this is becoming more standard, but at least looking back over the last couple of weeks, we've been seeing a lot more focus on the Impale. But the second point Carapace makes that stun 1.2, and that is enough to get off the Impale. Against heroes like Puck, that's really important because then you can coil or you can Carapace the, the orb and then get your stun off guaranteed. Uh, it's also great against other heroes in this game, such as the Wyvern. The Splinter Blast can target you, and then you can counterplay that way. Many ways of, of using Carapace in this game. He's actually going to max it out. He's going 2 1 3. This is when it's weird. <laughs> now it's really unusual. Plus 0.6 seconds is what he's looking for. Yeah, lower cooldown as well. It's yeah, five seconds lower. This spell scales incredibly well. But so does Impale. And you know, a lot of the time you want to have that damage. But this control of Carapace can definitely be very powerful. Oh, right now, again, he's looking for a target under the cover of Vendetta. Nothing really offering itself as resolution. Farming still underneath that dire observer wall. They didn't realize that gank was because EG had vision. Until now, Sentry Ward gets planted down. Maposhka, even just putting it a little bit further north, so he's able to check out the ancient camp. The rest of Empire putting their attention towards the mid tier one. And support's coming in. Wyvern will arrive. Splinter Blast is a great D pusher. And yep. Van doesn't want to stick around for that. So is the orb. Very difficult to push into the EG towers when EG are prepared. This terrible is getting really far. Artiz is having a great start so far. Pretty much uncontested farm. 156 CS minute 14. So currently at about 11 CS a minute. We'll get a 15 minute Mansa style for his efforts. And I think in this game he also has a better core matchup. It's not perfect. I think there are there are problems. Again, Farm Sven can mess with Terrorblade quite well, and there's some decent AOE damage, but it doesn't feel like that last PL game which just seems like semi hopeless at times. Uh, Arteezy can definitely play a big game here. And it's interesting to see that this is in some ways similar to what Liquid ended up doing on the when they were backs were against the wall, where they had uh, Miracle farm a troll for what seemed like an eternity, and then he really started carrying in that game. Maybe EG have decided to just adopt that style here. It's going to be difficult farming. for him. Like, farm him up, but Resolution's also taking that very greedy farm build again. Oh, it's like very greedy. Like, just more orientated towards an Echo Saver plus Mask of Madness. He's rinsing and repeating from game one. It worked, but Arteezy definitely has a better start than game one. And with the Observe Warden Sentry down, they're trying to contest as much of the Ancients as possible. I came in a little bit late, and Roger was also in a good position. So I'm used to spike Carapace there in anticipation of the orb from Samael. Didn't come out, however. Samael's now going to have to commit his orb to the mid lane to hold it off. Arteezy creates a couple of illusions, and then we'll look towards the bottom lane with Metamorphosis available. There should be a tier 2 tower to be taken. The trade off is FN doing damage to the top tier 2 tower, getting space as well. Dyer quickly scanning, wondering if anybody is coming in behind the mid lane. Not happening. The fortification is burnt. And this tier 2 tower is lost. And so is a lot of the access to Team Empire's jungle. That's Losing both the towers on the bottom as well as the one in the mid. Terribly looks so ter Done. terrifying sometimes. Roger. Yep. He just wanted to interfere with Arteezy's movement in universe. Maybe he's able to get a control. Zai's moving forward. There goes your first controller. He doesn't have Invis, but the Spy Carapace can't complete the TP, however. Four heroes from EG come in. And maybe now Arteezy, he's got a little bit longer with that Metamorphosis and the Army of Triants. They can push in heavier. This FNTP is a good ice blast, though. He's right there. The Ice Blast is a big radius. Connects on two of the heroes. In fact, three with the chill on Arteezy. They're backing up, Sven's coming in, Resolution, Universe gonna try and block him out with the trees, Resolution will have to run around, Arteezy needs some distance, but we still got that Sunder, level up and available, looks to use it, dropping Ghostic down low, Crip, he's got the curse up as well, so they have counter team fight, and the Coated Venomancer, real issues, the Splinter Blast bounces through the arrow, and hits on the crit, he's dying to the poison sting in the trees, but it's a fail, jumped into the fight as well, let the Dream Call go, Resolution FN, locked him in the Ice Blast back up again, Samael has to evade the damage as long as he possibly can, but he can't evade it for that long. FN already on top of him. So EG, some chip damage to the tier 3 tower, losing a couple of heroes. Is it worth it? I don't think so. That looked like a good jump from Samael, but nobody was there to take advantage of the coil. Arteezy was already way out of there. 
the Wyvern had used his spells and got arrowed. And then you're looking at Night Stalker, doesn't really want a team fight, you know, as, as we've talked about multiple times, not really a team fight hero. And Nature's Prophet already used his ulti, so it, it's cool and all that you go in with the pump like this, but where's the follow up damage? It's just not there. And then Nyx Assassin Carapace. Uh, you know what? It sucks playing Puck against this hero. It really sucks. But they chose it willingly. They, they knew that Nyx Assassin was in the pool when they grabbed it, and Empire were pretty quick to respond with this mix of Roger. He's been having a good game so far. But even though that didn't go too well for EG on the base siege, they still got the 2 2. Arteezy survived again. He's getting very farmed. But Rezo is once again, as you said, catching up. The Sven is actually only 400 net worth behind this Terrorblade now. Yep. So the Terrorblade finally increases his attack range, finishing up the Dragonlance. And that is going to be the big thing. We understand Scotty comes in later for the Terrorblade. And you can start to kite the Sven out. Now probably be the next thing we can look towards. How does Team Empire, with all of this net worth, actually turn that net worth into damage, which is inflicted into EG? What are the problems they're going to have in the team fights? Yeah, it's there's a there's a lot of things to uh, to keep in mind for both teams when they go into these fights. It, Resolution, oh. blink, stun, ice blast. Okay, that ice blast doesn't even arrive. Resolution commit a god strength with mask and Madison Echo Saber. Not a chance to survive for crit. This is one of those relatively unimportant kills. Like crit gets killed, he tried to push out the wave. He gets jumped by two heroes. One of them uses, or they both use their ultimates, but there's no building damage. They run towards okay, mid. Okay, maybe if it transitions into. You still got oh, the ghost rank. He phase shifts. The arrow won't connect. The dust is over on the next assassin, so they have the vision. Silence also return. Roger the spike. Carabas makes it impossible for Samel to get back down the hill as he hit him with that illusionary orb. But Artizi's coming in, sending illusions to scout around the northern side. And they're gonna hold their tower. So, yep. all right here for EG. Now the question is, is this going to be a repeat of game number one? EG have a good early game, their lanes are going pretty well, they have the farm on a couple of heroes. This is when they need to come up big compared to the first game. But you look at the team fight of, you know, of Empire and it just looks like taking fights for EG is going to be really difficult. Mm -hmm. They just, they don't have the same kind of uh, team fight prowess, so maybe what you're looking towards is combining your Night Stalker and Nature's Prophet to find kills, but it just seems like they've fallen off a little bit. Their peak is early on into the game and those moves just didn't really exist for them. You're still waiting for that big item to arrive for Nature's Prophet. Like, he has the face boots and drums, but there was no increase of damage that comes from something like a Maelstrom. He's still trying to complete up that Orc of the Malevolence. Now, this is an easier thing to find. The Venomanta actually being pushed forward. Dream Call cancelling his TP. And completely surrounded on all sides. That was his own four staff. Trying to get further away from the Night Stalker to do his TP, but into the arms of the rest of EG. Kill going to Arteezy, so he takes first place on Network again. What else we got coming up? So Manta just got completed by the Mirana just a minute ago. Uh, the Terrorblade is building in toward Kite. Late yep. soon we have both teams trying to build Solo Crest. Venomancer has the Medallion. Zai is close to his Medallion. Oh, they found Maposhka. Ancient Apparition on the run away from Zai. The extra support comes in. The Ice Blast is nice. Zai going to get cold feeted. But they have enough life to survive. It is only a level 1 Ice Blast on the Ancient Apparition. EG look like they're having a, a better time making moves. This Night Stalker is contributing a lot. Zai has set up 8 out of 9 kills for his team. Constantly roaming around, gathering information. Still without wings. What does it look like when he flies? Has he flown yet this game? It looks... It's like just flailing in the air, like flapping. Around. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. It's, it's when he realizes he didn't skip arm day. His arms just let him beat the wind into submission. I feel like the hero should just look like this. <laughs> just clipped. <laughs> I feel he'll be very less impressive with his immortal. Spike Carapace stung, Crystal Ma I mean the uh, Winter Wyvern getting hit up by that Spike Carapace once more. Every time he lets that shard down, it's just too much of a chance that's going to re be reflected. EG have done a very good job at not losing this mid tower. It's 21 minutes in. Uh, the, the top tower fell relatively early, but Empire haven't managed to, to take another structure just yet. Both towers for EG are low, so they will eventually be falling, but just delaying it this much has allowed Arteezy to get a lot of additional farm because they've kept the map control in their favor. The same for Universe. Yeah, they're looking for something bottom here. Reza would be a really big kill. He's hiding off on the sides, but Night Stalker will get eyes on him now. Yep. Could try to surround him from both sides. He doesn't have his BKB yet. Putting the urn on him. Going to make it difficult to get away. Here comes Universe. Gives the extra vision. Plus the Orchid Silence onto Sven. The damage will be more than enough. Resolution will fall. 50 seconds on the sideline. Image was chasing Nick's assassin, turns on the spike carapus, Zai, fancy footwork, and now dusting up Nick's assassin TPing out. Is there enough damage? There is when Samel arrives with the rift. And that is a big opening. You've actually got the push. Metamorphosis is up for a fair amount of time. 
The only thing which isn't working here for EG is the fact that Altizi doesn't have a creep wave to push into the tier 3 tower to force a reaction from Empire. He doesn't have any mana either, so he can't make any illusions anymore, and he's just gonna, you know, be happy with what he got. I believe he did get the kill on the Sven, which is another big influx of gold for the Terrorblade, overtaking him by a lot at this point. He got 305 gold for that kill. Still, though, similar to game number one, it's not Empire with one farming core. It's not just this Sven that you're looking out for. FN is having another great game. He's really farmed 10 CS a minute, similar net worth to that of the Sven, and they're both way ahead of the puck, so a lot of pressure on this Terrorblade to deliver with all the space that Arteezy has been given. He, he needs to play a good game here later on, because when you look at their lineup, once again, the control of their lineup, the team fight is, I would say, inferior to that of Empire. So when push comes to shove and they need to go high ground, Arteezy needs to be big, and he needs to not be out of position. Well, here's the danger zone. We always said it was around the 25 to 20 minute mark for Evil Geniuses, with Smack Bang Plum in the middle of that, and Empire smoking up. They were looking to want something. Originally, I think it was a gank on mid, but they turned their attention towards the Roche pit. No easy way for EG to scout it out right now, because Universe doesn't have any treants in the neighborhood. A Moonlight Shadow even being cast, and they are fine. Team Empire, they will take Roshan, not to mention EG Smoke. It just got broken. Roger is here into the cover. Oh. Moonlight Shadow gets a double stun into the double ice blast. This is exactly what EG didn't want. Samael is trapped. Where's the save? He blinks up on John. You also have to protect him. You're John up Samael. He will survive and escape from Team Empire. Empire, but the damage is done. Roshan is still in the hands of Team Empire. Aegis the Immortal belongs to FN. Very nice play from both sides in that situation. Roger setting up the beautiful two hero stun and Samael quick under pressure to get out of that situation. Needed to cast his spells in that exact sequence, in that exact way to get out of that. Does manage to survive still. As you said, the Aegis does go the way of Empire. And this is one of the benefits you have of Nyx Assassin. It's just that when you go for a play like that, you feel pretty comfortable. They, they, didn't, they didn't seem to hesitate for a moment there, Empire. They just run into the pit. Nyx is scouting outside. Okay, they're not coming here. We feel like, okay, they're not going to contest. And they just take it from 100 to 0 with no flinching at all. Yep. It's also interesting, too, the fact that EG, like, they did smoke up. The smoke broke, but there was no instant detection. This allowed the Nyx Assassin to set up for that double stun. Yeah, Night Stalker actually had dust on him, but I think Zai wasn't confident that he... It, first of all, maybe that Nyx broke their smoke, and secondly, where he was at that point in time. Now he's got eyes on they Zai. Again. This Easy is a dead a Night more. Stalker, Toby. He's very dead. Ice Blast, Storm Bolt, and it is easy as slice. He could have tried to fly, but two problems with that. It was daytime, and he lost his wings this patch. So, you know, what are you going to do? I sent you having real issues with this. Universe <laughs> doing universe things. It's one of my pushing down towards the man. bottom what lane. With a splinter blast. Yeah, go by your scepter. Okay. Crit is actually helping with the splinter blast. So Universe actually gonna get some good momentum into the tier three tower. The trade-off is still Empire taking the mid tier two. But you can definitely see the idea here. Oh wow, that TP, are you gonna complete that one? Some males coming in, the Yule Scepter stop it, except from getting out there. They got that that gem of true side over on the puck, but Samael, as quickly as he got it, he will lose it. It's now in the hands of Nyx Assassin, evil geniuses! Ooh. 25 minutes! This is this is the the dead zone for EG. Uh, this is really bad news. Samael, so it, it seemed like a little bit of disconnect in what they wanted to do. So Nature's Prophet had that good push going on bottom, but he didn't dare to go for the high ground push. And then at the same time, Samael is coming in trying to stop these TPs, but stopping those TPs is nice, but doesn't have that big of an impact when you already gave up on the push on the bottom lane. And now high ground time been. for Empire. That Observer Ward on the bottom, it saw the fact that Arteezy wasn't in position with that Splinter Blast, they can keep their Creep Wave alive long enough. And the fact there's no Puck, there's no Dream Call. The two counter pushes from EG that protect the high ground are lost. The attack damage on the tower is on one HP. Let your Illusion attack it, that'll do the work. The Catapult finishes the job, and TP's out. Resolution will be happy. Maposhka, the Void, it'll cancel off his TP as Zai hits the ground and kills off the Ancient Apparition. Wow, he has three smokes as well. Oh, oh bonus nice kill pad. time. Venomancer going down, that is a nice bonus. They still lost the two or three. EG are not happy right now with how this is going. Like no. this, this, these last couple of minutes have been very bad for them. The, they know the Aegis is still on the side of Empire sitting on that Mirana, who, by the way, is getting really, really farmed. So here we go. There's the Yule Scepter, and I believe the Coil is going to come out now, but He's this... The stun from Nyx even missing, but Sven made so hard. So Mail has used all of his cooldowns. That defensive Yule not available when you use it aggressively. Phases on cooldown. 
and does not look too happy with himself in that moment. Definitely not the best play in that situation coming up. Yeah, they definitely needed more numbers if he's going to go for that. Right now they have the numbers against the Nyx Assassin getting caught. Here comes Aegis Prophet as well. The silence TP won't complete. So the gem of true sight. Oh, he gave it back. That he actually hey. just gave it back. That is very important for EG. So that's the best. I mean, debatable. Maybe it's a better kill than a core. Like this gem is really, really important. You don't want EG in the same position as last game where they lose complete control of the map and don't dare to go out. At least they have better split push this game, arguably, with the Nature's Prophet and the Terrorblade Illusions to try to get the waves out. But still, in some ways, it seems like we're watching the same archetype of game play out here. And EG need to make sure the same mistakes don't happen again. Zven getting bigger and having no easy, quick answer to him. There is more answers in this game for evil geniuses. And as long as they can keep that vision up, like that's the that's probably the bigger difference between game one and game two. Now they have this gem of true side back. They get rid of both the aggressive observer wards from Team Empire. Team Empire now have no wards on the map. The only one they have is in the stock of the ancient apparition with four sentries. So might be a good idea to see where that observer ward goes down just so we can see the mentality of Team Empire. Do they hold back? Do they wait this off? Aegis the Immortal's gonna get reclaimed, so in three minutes' time, Roshan could spawn up for the teams. This may be the next attention point for both sides. Continue to farm up. Empire will still be happy as long as Resolution continues to get bigger and bigger. And Ghost, gets more and more space as well. That Get experience the permanent. Let it, let it rock. Can't forget about the Marana, man. I, you really I, can't. FN is farm, man. He's got 15,000 net worth. He is currently sitting at 3,000 ahead of the Nature's Prophet and the Puck, who are, of course, ahead of that Venno. But I would say this Marana net worth can become very... Very strong later on, this hero scales pretty well, gets a damage talent at level 20, has high agility gain. He was the unsung hero of game one on that Ember Spirit, and now EG, maybe they do do something about him. FN farming up the ancients, EG have no vision of that high ground. Crit putting down the sentry while they see the observer, and then they get a glimpse of FN for a moment, but Samael just used his orb to help push out the mid lane, and the rest of Empire are converging on the position. They're even going to Moonlight Shadow, but thanks to the Observer and Sentry Ward, they still actually don't see anything. They're smoked up as well as Moonlight Shadow. Double the layer of protection for Team Empire. The only hero Roger doesn't want to run into right now is the Puck. He has the gem. Anyone else is a kill. Well, they found crit, or maybe they've found crit. Zai's down here as well. Sentry Ward place, no Observer Ward. That smoke still hasn't broken yet. Maposhka's so close to it, but it's at the end of the smoke time, so they won't realize that smoke broke because of them. Crit lets off the Splinter Blast, and there's your first stun. Zai, he's running as quickly as he can. The arrow flies forward from FN, it won't hit the target. Zai, keep running without wings, he's more aerodynamic. Moving up and over the hill, Zai <laughs> won't be able to catch him. Zai, keep on running. Run, Zai, run! Roger. <laughs> Can't catch him, go sick, at least the Plague Lord is down, and he is away. He's gonna make it back to the dire side of the river after running from the tier two tower on bottom lane. I wonder if this is how the first people envisioned flying would be. You know, <laughs> just flap your arms, you know, that. oh, okay. Works well. All right, Zai gets out of there. Um, M Empire could have probably got two kills there if they weren't so hungry to go for the Wyvern. Both of them made the jump at the same time. They committed both stuns onto crit, and Zai is happy and lucky to survive in that moment. And maybe EG now, they're converging. Four of them are grouped up, but they don't want to smoke. They, they actually don't have don't a one anymore. But they have a double damage in the bottle of Arteezy. He's so... Ready to fight. Yeah. Butterfly. He really, really wants to. This is a very strong terribly. But still no BKB, and that means he's susceptible to this magic damage, and they have no save against that. They only have the Cold Embrace, no Glimmer Cape yet, I believe. Wyvern doesn't have it. He's building toward it. Zai is going for a Heaven's Halberd this time around against the Sven, an item that they were definitely missing in that previous game. Roshan to control. Think about the time, man. Solution. Yep. Three, three seconds until it could potentially be up. And EG we got ourselves wanted. a slightly above average spawn. Yeah, two minutes and ten seconds left on the clock. Actually, a decent amount above average. I yep. wonder exactly what the average spawn time is. I don't have those stats available. I can tell you by power of maths that it should be something about nine and a half minutes, Toby, because the spawn time is between eight and 11. Do we want to flip a coin? Did your, did your your bad bad. skills please get applauded? Bad. <laughs> if that's impressive, <laughs> <laughs> then we got ourselves some NA math. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, a Danish education right there. <laughs>
Oh. All right, so Roshan, obviously EG can keep their eyes on it. The arrows have been thrown out from Marana. That'll allow FN to scout out the pit too. As both teams, they can look to try and hold this. The only downside for Team Empire is their fastest pusher in the lane is still going to be this man. And he needs to come down and push the lane now. With the plus four Trinkets being summoned by Universe, he does get a lot of push whenever he summons the trees as he comes to the lane. And he will keep the split push going. So we have to look towards the BTs. Hilariously enough, no one from Empire actually has BTs. It's always going to be the TP scroll. Yeah, BOTs are item. It's an item that you might want to get on the Mirana next after the. Oh, Ghostick! He's, He's going to walk in. A quick push out with its four stop, and they commit the Moonlight Shadow. That's another smoke from EG that doesn't really bear fruit. The last one they did they get a kill with their last smoke? I don't even remember. Seems like an eternity ago. Math has clouded our judgment. They've got a, they've got a pretty good uh, amount of vision in this game, like you pointed out. It, it, the feel of the game is different. Like this time, we're getting further into the game, and it doesn't seem like EG in the same way are losing out on the gold grab. It's still, it's more or less stabilized. Experience favoring Empire a little bit. That's the Veno talent. I would attribute a lot of that too. Mm -hmm. But EG still, they're looking better. I know. Like, they're still. A bit, that X factor that we've seen from EG in the past just doesn't really seem to be there in the same force in the they, series. They have one way of doing it, and that's the universe factor. It's the split push factor. Yep. We did see him in previous series and previous games during TI7 looking for that side of the push off, making the enemy wonder if they can go for the trade. And with that lack of maneuverability from the, without the BTs and Empire, they do have to commit to the fight. This is their problem. There's a big army of trees pushing the bottom lane. They smoke up, looking for the fire. Roshan is now back up. At least because they brought down that tier three tower in the middle, they can get rid of the shrine. So EG can't bring reinforcements to Roshan. But the attack, they found the opening. It's over on Puck. Cold Embrace protecting him. It wears off in resolution. A quick kill. The gem of true side hit the deck. It's now in the hands of Roger. But the push is still coming in on bottom lanes. They want to go for Roshan for the push to the tier 2 tower up on top. How hard do you want to commit to this team empire? They can kill this Rosh really fast. They didn't use God for the kill. So look at this. This That's is like it. a 10 second Rosh kill. Somebody needs to go back to base though. This is uh, no the last March of the Ents happening at bottom right now. Sorry for the spoilers. We have this Lord Rings. Venomancer will have to do it. I almost want to see him commit his Nova to try and defend it. Because the, the tier 3 tower is dying. Gale won't be enough. And you're seeing it fall. They have to fortify to defend against these Treants. Meanwhile, Universe TP's over. Finding Maposhka. Walking up. He's looking for an aggressive Observer Ward. So Universe finding a kill and bringing that tier 3 tower almost to its needs at 137 HP. I, I'm just, I'm really wondering. This, this game is obviously super big for both teams. It secures Empire the progression into the next round in the top eight and for EG it gives them that third game and you just you feel like all EG needs at this point is just that little bit of momentum that I was worried for Liquid as well after that game one against Secret they got destroyed and then they found their footing and plot themselves back into game two and game three looked very nice from them I feel like we can see a similar tendency from EG but they need to find that opening in this game where you just feel like okay now EG has this game and that moment hasn't really occurred for well 20 minutes, once again. Yep. It, it's, they're it's finding the, these small picks. They get a kill on the push. Okay, it's nice, but Empire get the Roshans. Empire get the TI3. Uh, TI3, the, the Tier 3. <laughs> TI3 went to Alliance. Spoilers, sorry if you didn't see the International 3. Um, but the, the Shrines as well. Empire are going to take the bottom shrine out. No, Resolution forgot it exists. Actually, he's running in circles around it. You can attack this building. There we go. Oh, he's, okay. he's worried about revealing his position. Yeah, of course. Is, is the only thing. And EG. Bottom tier one's going to fall as well. Empire, again, progressing on the map. They're getting something done. Actually, now they're hesitating a little bit. It's, it's the team fight they're worried about. They're worried about getting cursed up. They're worried about Arteezy actually having an influence. Now, you did get a counter against that. The Monkey King bar got picked up by Resolution. He has the double damage rune. As he solo TP's up to the top. Going for the kill. You <laughs> shredded up a man with a sword is all you need for Team Empire. I just saw Mirana destroy a tower in 10 seconds as well. It's got it's got to worry you if you're EG, man. You, you're seeing this progress of these forests. Do you feel like you're keeping up? It's, it's you the, you, the you problem. feel like you're staying in it so probably more. This is the problem with Puck. If you're picking Puck and you're not finding fights and you don't go Midas, this hero has this... It has its downfall, and then on level 25, you pick it back up again. 
But Samael is really far away. Where's he that didn't detection? go Midas, and the fights didn't go that way. Next, the Spike yep. Carapace is up. That'll actually get the stun because they did dust him up. A quick Yule Scepter up and towards the end. Moonlight Shadow will now protect him. Where is your secondary detection? Dream Call from Samael. Whoops! In the jungle, the arrow is flying forward and support is arriving from Team Empire. FM with that leap up. He's looking for a fight. He's got the Agassi Mortal. He really wants a fight. Even the Monkey King bar ready to attack into Arteezy. But EG retreat home. They did not get the opening they wanted. Good disengage. That could have been that could have been Elena Rax if they got caught off. I think no buyback on the Night Stalker. Puck and the Terrible Aid both both have it. No this buyback is, on crits. This is great though for Empire. There's no pressure coming in on their oh, the lane. Perf, they it's get a the arrow. perfect spy carapace into an arrow. The four stuff out. Cripple survived the ice blast as a connected sentence to Murana, who has to manda style out of the Bloodthorn. And escape away the tier three tower. Chipped, but not killed. And already, Universe knows what his job is. TP to bottom lane. Realize yeah. it's still only the Orc, and he hasn't finished the Bloodthorn, holding onto that buyback money. The split push game really seems like the only thing that EG can really pull off at this time. The five-man fights are maybe possible when Nature's Prophet and Puck are starting to have big enough items. But for now, this Mirana and Sven combo is just stronger than this, this core combo of EG. It's just the nature of the heroes if they don't find the type of game they want. So Universe needs to get big. Bloodthorn is coming in close. He could actually buy it, but it doesn't have buyback, so he's holding on to that. Um, Glimmer Cape still not up for Wyvern. Looks like Crit is changing his mind and going for a four staff for himself instead. Defensive wards are up. The arrow flies forward. Crit. Standing still is how you dodge arrow. Arteezy. Oh, ice this blast. Is automatic. The ice blast is perfect. Spike Arrow is doing the work with Samael. Into the back lines, killing up the Poshka. They need more control. They're losing Rax, Toby. The Venomancer, he may go down. You are right. The middle lane's been taken out by the Marana. She's moving up towards the top tier three tower. The mid melee is gone. So the fight is split up. Universe standing its ground against Ghosting. Ghosting, he's still trapped inside the trees. Finally able to push himself away. But on the top lane, that's where the defense is. FN did the damage. It's the trade-off game. It's meant to be EG with the prop for causing that, but now it's resolution. The manliest of all, killing off the vampire of Night Stalker. And the gem is back the other way again. Hot potato. So Mirana got the melee racks and almost a tier three tower top. Tier three tower bottom. The Gale it pulled him off. It's on 31 HP. Ghostic barely was able to take the aggro of the Dark Creep way back. That's pretty important to hold on to. Defense back in top. Times. Yep. Crit doesn't have curse to mail. She hadn't blinked silence, but it's too late, especially up against Amanta. Bit of chip damage there from Evan. He's almost 25. I'm curious to see if he goes for the leap talent or the triple arrow. We used to see Cormoranas. Actually, we're going to have a replay here. So there's the stun on Arteezy. Get the ice blast coming, but he does get the BKB off here. Good timing on that. Avoids the explosion damage and is able to turn around and go fight. Meantime, it's such a hard fight when you've got no mana. Like he starts this fight with only that 100 geez. mana. So clutch from Ghost Stick, and he will survive in the end of this. Uh, he survived, right? He man fights universe and survives this. Yeah, he gets out with a four staff. He gets just out of the range of the trees yeah. in time. So a lucky duck. And it's like, damn, I only got one rat. Universe is going to get the hell out of here, like right now. Ancient apparition, as well as the Venomance, is coming in. He goes in Viz, no detection. That was a sentry on Mikoshka, but he doesn't have any way of breaking the TP, nor does the Venom, so Universe will get out of there. But as it stands, Empire are once again controlling the map. Resolution. Able to take Roche. Crit, oh, he's just looking at him. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, it's uh, it's not easy to play against Sven as a position 5 with 2,000 M. He said you love yeah. crits. That's not, that's, not even, yeah. that's not even a crit. That's I just love it when the thought of me. That's the best thing, as long as it's someone else. So, such a team player. <laughs> so Mirana did go for the triple arrow. Um, in the past, we used to see leap attack speed all the time, but since leap got changed to only a five second duration instead of 10, uh, players are opting way more for the sacred arrow. If you get any core arrow connection, or especially if you're lucky enough to get two, that has a tendency of ending games. And this leap duration is not deemed to be valuable enough. FM was already able to force out fortification of Team Empire. He just took, he just came up the ramp, attacked him a couple of times with his Mantra Illusions, and that's enough for Team uh, for EG to fortify. Very problematic. Empire, their team fight's getting better and better. The Agnum Scepter is on the Venom Man, so they got protection from his four staff and that Lotus Orb on him. Rogers seems to just be finding everyone ev whenever he needs to. And the sustain 
on both FN as well as Resolution is just intense. These pickoffs will help you come back, especially the solo pickoffs for Samael. It's levels to get to 420. He needs that level 25 talent. And the Radiant Courier sniped by Universe. Every little bit counts. Yeah, this adds up. This, this actually gives EG some pretty important information. Samael got 450 gold for killing the AA. Are they coming for give them an idea of the gold graph of the game. Atizi going into a fight once more with only uh, 480 mana. He does have the double damage. Carapace! Scotty gets by Carapace, that's over on Samael. Oh, and the curse it. is out for crit at the moment. Holding Nyx Assassin in position. Arrow flies forward, resolution. Oh, come on. Has crit not been through enough? Here comes Arteezy looking for the damage. He has the DD room, but resolution just has himself. He cleans up the rest of Arteezy. Zai trying to focus onto that Marana. Support is here from Arteezy, but resolution already has the double kill further to the south. Arteezy's Samael in trouble now. Comes to Nyx Assassin, but Arteezy survived. The Ice Blast is going to connect. The Storm Bolt held the universe! Space created with the Sprout! Arteezy, does he actually burn? Nothing will reach him. Samal gets a double kill, taking out the FN Spree. And Resolution has to stand here under the Dream Coil. EG is still two men down. They have to retreat back. That's a game-saving Sprout. Arteezy was 100% dead there without that Sprout from Universe. He didn't have buyback. Run, Courier. It managed to pick up the gem which was dropped on the deck. It still got the rest of the Scotty, which needs to be delivered to Arteezy. Courier currently having more value than net worth. If crit, he's got nothing. But the Scotty is up and they needed that in the fight. They needed to kite resolution. He was free to do what he wanted and we'll have another look at that fight. Is this very important for EG that Samael doesn't die here? Roger didn't have the vision to secure the stun. Crit dies, getting used to that. He's gonna get jumped by Rezo every fight and just kill it off. And Arteezy, see, this is an awkward situation because he doesn't know what the cooldown is on Sven's Lincoln, so he doesn't know if he can really go for a Sunder play or not. So now he's going to back off after trying to help out Zai a little bit. Now the Lincolns is ready again as Sven jumps in, and uh, we're going to have a little look at nice. FN uh, leaning back. Apparently, I I'm pretty sure those two things did not happen at the same time because Hero was still alive. <laughs> and Universe is like, well, you're welcome, Arteezy. We can still win TI. Well, it's a long road to go, even if they do win this game, that will still only force a third as Team Empire have that advantage. But Evil Geniuses, now they know that Roshan is up. They're getting more and more into their arsenal. The Aghanim Scepter is on Samael. A big item, especially to help control up that BKB resolution, and not allowing 25. him to keep moving. This is what I was wondering about. Team Empire later on, you've got all this net worth, 27k of it, onto resolution. They're defending the town at 6 HP. They refuse. Hold the line. Oh. But, Roshan. Ags on Puck is big. Nature's Prophet is closing in on Hex. There's the scan, though, from Radiant. They're nice. not going to give up this Roche. That's big for EG. EG they don't really get hit by this. the Ice Blast, but just to make Arteezy's life better, he gets stunned up. The second he tries to go back into the pit, and Roger in his dream clock. Big catch from Samael. They've already killed off Apochka. Can they get resolution? The cleave is going out, but it's only on a fake Arteezy. He'll make more of that, and maybe they have the slow resolution. Back to the tier two tower. Samael's going in after it, and ghosting. The ulti is nice. It's coding EG and jump, but resolution back to the safety of home. He's away. Ghosting may not be so lucky. Arteezy has the damage. He has the range. He has the power. And with a double catapult wave, they can bring down the tier 2 tower, but remember what they started. They came here for Roshan. They could try to go for it. Their heroes are very low. Zai is low. Arteezy is half HP. The other two are faring pretty well. With Venomancer being dead, they might try to go for it. This is not a guaranteed Roshan, however. Sven can try to contest this. Buyback's coming. Marana and the buyback of Venom. Arrow's they want to get there. Forward. Universe going to dodge it. It oh, hit hit easy. It hits Roshan, making life easier. And the science on the FN. Roger looking for a target. Spike Karamas being committed very early. Resolution will get the sun over on Zai, so he'll kill him to the north while the Yule Scepter sending that Nyx Assassin around. Hits the ground, killed off quickly by the Bloodborne. FN still looking for another kill. Samal going to drop himself away for that Raleonia. Damage. EG, they have to retreat. They've already lost one. The stun is too big. You go by Arteezy. Buy back out from Zai. He's TPing the tier 3 tower. Long way to go, but Samal goes in. The triple coil plus the silence, allowing Arteezy the space to get away. They'll all tank the stun, and they need to keep running, but Resolution blinks forward. Ice Blast coming in. Arrow as well. It won't connect on any of the heroes. So Crit even dodges it. Arteezy, he needs to live. He'll take the life away from Crit so they can survive. They're shrining up. Arteezy will make it in the cut. It's on the better EG, hold the line! Three heroes gone! They're looking for more! Resolution! The Lincoln Spear's being triggered, but he can still blink away. The damage 
position and connect the arrow from FN. However, it does on the side. He'll stand his ground, find that kill. Artezi wants the kill, but he couldn't get the reflection off on FN. So Moonlight Shadow will allow Im Empire to retreat under the protection of invisibility, and the fight shall end. Oh, at the last hour, EG are stepping up. They're playing these fights very, very well. Crit and Artezi together. This is <laughs> the key. Arteezy a live late game. First the Furion saving him earlier, and this time he gets sundered by Crit, or rather the other way around, and Crit gets a really nice oh, burst onto the Venom Uni. Bottom lane, he's, he's coming in, he TP's forward, and lets the trees take the tier 3 tower. This opens up more options for him, because now he can look towards the shrines. Resolution, consolation is he has a whole bunch of trees to kill. And he's going to be able to get his refresher again. Oh, Arteezy can't die here. Oh, he, Where's the he ice really blast? can't die. Because <laughs> it's a solo Nyx. <laughs> Literally. You are right. <laughs> Technically right, the best kind of right. There was no support nearby. So the buybacks... Still Night Stalker and Prof are going to have theirs on cooldown. So is Venomancer. So you'll probably see the teams just temper the pace of this game for the moment. You can look towards the next Roshan. That's a while off. Can I hit the shrine? Did the cheese get used in that fight as well by Ichi? I believe it did. Not seeing it any of the yep. heroes, so I'm assuming it, it was. Yep. But now you've actually hit the 420 Samael. This injection of money into him is allowing him to build into high levels of Dagon. So having the Veil of Discord and the Dagon pop, this is a lot of money, a lot of damage which is coming their way. Even if he just starts buying Moonshots for everyone on EG, it's still going to be useful. He can one-shot the AA, which is very good. Uh, or, for example, force the Mirana down to half HP before she BKBs. This combo, this 1-2 combo from Puck is very fast. Just Veil, Dagon, Blink, and use your spells, and you kind of have to respond to the BKB pop if you're FN. So. Keep an eye out for some ale to look for that jump, especially with the help of Zai. It shouldn't be too difficult with that Night Stalker night vision, but they will have most of the time. This is this is going to be a tense late game. This has the potential to go very late and also to end within a few minutes because both teams have such extremely powerful late game pushing heroes. The Sven can destroy barracks in no time. On the other side, you have Terrorblade and Nature's Prophet with their pushing prowess. Now Furion is going to get level 25. And it's going to be the remove teleport cooldown from Universe. So 100% split push focus. Uh, I guess his uh, alternative was also 100% split push focus. So it's just <laughs> this is just more <laughs> enabling. More yeah. than anything else, just come into the fights, move out. Empire don't want to wait for it. A four-man smoke up behind FN, who's pushing the mid lane in. This is the lane they had that momentum. This is the lane that FN already achieved victory on last time. Now, Evil Genius is on the hill to the east of Empire. Will they wrap around? Roger will do it. Arteez is the man. Will he get in the shins on the BKB? Is out. So it's a dream call. Resolution has to stand his ground for the moment. The arrows fly forward. Doesn't on any of EG. They want to fight. Arteez has the range. The Venomenta has the ulti. Arteez sunders up the damage. If he can't, actually, he can't regenerate. He may as well steal it. FN, they'll have the deep to bring him down. Universe. Beating through the Mirana, getting through the beach. Oh, no, Jet! The Kravich is unbelievable for Empire! How did he live through that? FN gets. He, it's just one of those moments. Oh, I'm sprouted. I'm just going to A click ground and win a one on three. Oh, okay, that's probably boy. not fair to say. That was not really one on three. Three but heroes. It looked like it. Three heroes down for Team Empire, uh, for, for EG. How do they actually defend? Empire are taking the top lane of Rax. Samael's looking at them, but the Spike Carap is up from the next assassin. He goes for the stun, Puck will fall. EG is all falling apart. Even if Samael buys back, it won't save the lane of Rax. It's just Arteezy. He bought a refresher, so at least he had some metamorphosis and BKB back up again, but he needs friends. And Team Empire, they ha are they gonna stop at two lanes? They will probably take this middle range barracks with, with resolution and then call it a day for now. Samael, oh. drink call over on two, triggers already. The Lincoln Sphere on resolution, Ancient Apparition got stunned up. And Maposhka being low, resolution, he didn't burn the BKB, which may have been the desire of Samael. But FN feeds into the tower, already the reflect, FN wants to break free. He's able to do so. But here they go through bottom once more. Get rid of the illusions. Got strength up for resolution. Takes the tier three tower attack. Crit waiting on the lines. Arrows fly forward. It won't hit his mark. Roger, he'll hit his. It's a terror blade. The ice blast is coming in. That's easy. He cannot die right now. Or else this game is over from EG. The curse is on to FN. They will turn for the damage. The summon from Arteezy. He gets his life back again. They still have the shrine to work with. And maybe resolution with no BKB. He can't escape. The stun is huge from Roger. Looking for the follow up. He hits Arteezy. Holding him there. FN's bringing in the damage. Samael has to come back. Maybe with the shrine they have the life. But they're losing the teammates. Nice Stalker has 
fallen and been focusing the rack while Resolution focuses the Terra Blade. Arteezy the Tier 4 Towers. Samel back in again. Dream Call is up. But where is the control? Arteezy is gone. And EG is a last dish defense. FM breaks free, but Samel's got the damage to kill him off. The buyback triple from Empire. They can smell it in the water. And it's EG's blood. The rivers run blue. And evil geniuses, they're trapped inside their own fountain. Samel, the sole survivor of the moment, while Empire look to bring down the Tier 4 Towers to open up the shrine. Samel may have a triple kill. Ghost and Glenson over freely fly. Resolution, there go the Tier 4 Towers. Puck taken out of the fight for the moment. It's going down 2700. They find the weapon as well. It looks over for EG and it is over. Team Empire will 2-0 out. Champions taking them out in the second round of the lower bracket. This tournament just keeps on giving, doesn't it? Full of surprises. Empire, I think very few people would have picked them to win this 2-0. Maybe some people thought they could win this game, but EG came in as favorites for sure. Resolution bathing in the glory of the crowd, having the time of his life, maybe the second best time of his life. Maybe he will have the time of his life later this tournament if this keeps on going for Team Empire. If they can keep the run going, sure, the next opponent will be Team Liquid, but Evil Geniuses, it's a bit of defeat. They're not the first team to experience this. OG stood in the same place, losing from that lower bracket matchup. He looks he down can't and it. can't get the series. And this one's actually even a little bit worse. They couldn't get a win on the main stage. OG at least got one against MVP back in last TI. But this is heartbreaking for the EG fans. Gotta commend Empire, though. Credit where it's due. I think they had the better draft in both games. I think they played their hearts out. They had a great read on EG's playstyle and on their movements. They were well prepared, came in with an idea, executed it well. Hats off to them. I think Empire, after this series, looks like uh, a real contender to go far. Now they're top eight, as we talked about, or as the panel talked about previously, you know, uh, like Pike had said with DC last year. Our goal was top eight, we made top eight. Yep. All, everything beyond that was a bonus. We were just having a good time, playing our hearts out, having trying our best to win. Got all the way to the finals. Who knows what, what Team Empire can accomplish this yeah, year? They look so happy, and rightly so. Not only is it just a, like it's not even a one man show, everyone did so well. Team, Team Empire, they're coordinating everything. The stuns, the movement. These guys are pushed to late game time and time again, and they're showing as a unit they can make the right decisions. The decisions that push themselves forward into the lower bracket round three to keep their TI7 hopes alive. How far can they go? It's the question, EG. It's over for them. Devastation for evil geniuses. But a Cinderella story for Team Empire, who at the 11th hour were worried that they would not have a fifth player. Resolution stepped in and absolutely marvelous coordination throughout. EG was so close to stabilizing so many times. Fought their hearts out in the last match, but it wasn't enough. Falling 0-2, we now know that Team Empire will be advancing to fight Team Liquid tomorrow. That was a hell of a match though. That game was, that ending, that was intense. That was that was some crazy yeah. fight that towards the end where kind of like the TB got hit by A blast, he sunders and then somehow ends up dying anyway. Potom survives about 100 HP. That was that was some crazy stuff. And even right before that very final moment, they had almost identical net worths on both teams, which is pretty rare in a game of that length. So many crazy crazy things happened that game. Also, that that, that was like a really difficult game to play. Sven like he. There's just so many things that they have to deal with. And they countered the Winter Wyvern in both games very well. Crit had 11 deaths in this game. I didn't particularly like the draft from them. Most particularly the Winter Wyvern in games one and two. Yeah, and I mean, Tomato, you talked about the influence of Nyx in that game. Every time Nyx made a play, you brought it up backstage. Yeah, he played pretty well. And he was getting so much vision and setting up kills with Asian Apparition. It was a like constant threat to, to EG. Like, Nyx was just running around, pressing carapace, and everyone died. And I mean, I remember I, I had to step away briefly and came back and saw the net worth and said, oh, what happened in mid? You know, why, why is Puck still on net worth? And you just went, Nyx, that's it. Just Nyx. <laughs> constant mana burns, constantly 
pounding down Smail. Pretty much every hero that Smail plays feels directly countered by Nyx. And Empire has just been picking better and better and playing better and better. It's yeah. no longer seems so resolution focused. FN did yeah. his, way, uh, his share of lifting in both of these games. That Murana was beautiful. I mean, both of them going straight for the MKB to have insane damage output. We were a bit skeptical of the triple arrows. <laughs> yeah, we were. We were talking about it. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> it, it worked out in the end. It, it was maybe not ultimately what won them the game, but I think uh, the AA pick, the kind of early AA pick in both games, worked out really well for, well for them. This, uh, Gosh, yeah. We saw the like hardcore position five. Like he was, he was poor on that AA. He was dirt poor, but he sent those alts, and you know he did his thing. And uh, I mean, look at how they're playing as a team. It's it's really impressive to see, like not just resolution. Of course, he is a huge factor in this. I'm sure not only his play, but maybe in terms of morale and you know, kind of like lifting their spirits. But they are playing really well together. And I know that for many people, this result means there's a lot of prediction brackets that don't make any sense anymore. So I want to get the sense from Purge a little bit about what it was that Team Empire was doing so well in that match. Well, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, it was actually a very even game up from both sides, to be honest. Um, and there was a very cool fight at about the 15 minute mark that I wanted to break down and talk about a little bit in case you guys are uh, maybe a bit newer to Dota. Now, EG was pushing the Tier 2 on the bot lane um, in a place where that gave them a good advantage because Empire was positioned on the opposite side of the map to split push, but they didn't have the same pushing power. So EG taking that tower felt comfortable teleporting. Because Arteezy's stun was interrupted, that meant that Empire on the other side of the map felt comfortable to take the enemy Tier 2, which is a great gold advantage, map advantage trade here. Um, unfortunately, they, they did lose their Nyx Assassin because of that, which basically put EG in the strategy mindset of, now we can go high ground with our TB ultimate, and try to do some damage to the tower. Um, we saw TP in from Mirana. Um, he did end up taking some good damage, but crucially, this Ice Blast hit on a lot of EG heroes, which means if they get too low, they're going to end up going down. And then a little bit of a sneaky TP in here by the uh, Venomancer was allowed, uh, w allowed him to land a Gale on Arteezy, giving him a really slow retreat. So now it's this EG knows they have to fight. They're trying to do everything they can do to keep enemy heroes away from Terrorblade, like the Sven over here. Even Zai committing a slow as well as a silence. Finally, we see a Sunder as well from Arteezy. And now Crit's trying to move forward to use his uh, Winner's Curse on Ghost Stick here, because if he does, it's going to catch anybody in this circle, and they will end up fighting Ghost Stick. So that's why Resolution is staying really high to the north, because he doesn't want to end up killing his ally. So every single team uh, playing well around this, Crit now has to back out, because he realized he's out of position. He does eventually get the Winter's Curse off, a very crucial arrow coming in to nail Crit, which ends up securing his kill. And now they're back on the chase on Empire because they had the great Winner's Curse. It's just a team fight so back and forward. Sumail as well, grabbing a three-man Dream Quill. Such an amazing play. But because of the Spike Carapace, he gets stunned. And even though EG felt like it was time for them to go back in, because he ends up getting stunned here, they throw out their spells and they end up killing Sumail on the way back. So this fight was just so intensely back and forward. And there were so many big implications. I mean, if EG just makes small edges here or there, they win this team fight. They could take a Rax at 15 minutes. But instead, it ended up what we ended up seeing with EG losing. I mean, Empire's just beautifully coordinated throughout all of this. And Empire, of course, has a huge path ahead of them to get to the finals, but are no doubt happy about this result. Before we get the chance to talk to Team Empire, we're going to head to Machine to have a conversation with Evil Geniuses, Zai. Thank you so much, Day9. Yes, indeed, the games get better, but my job does get harder. And I am joined now by Zai. So I think it, the question has to be, and it's, the floor is yours, it's simply just going to be, what happened? Um, I think it's more along the lines that nothing much happened. Um, personally, I felt very timid when we played. Like, we had a lot to lose. Um, and not playing to win, which probably Empire felt that they had a lot to prove. Um, they played their hearts out. I didn't feel like I played that well in the same kind of way. So, rough. So, from the start, do you think it was playing to lose, or was it more after game one that that mindset set in? I don't think it's playing not to lose, excuse me. I wouldn't say the, the same thing goes for uh, the entire team. That's just what I felt. Um, I don't know, honestly, we just didn't play well. Um, for what reason, I'm not sure. Um, it's, it's hard to say now. And for you now, is it just going to be a case of taking some time and kind of breaking that down a little later on down the line? Probably. I mean, it's pretty tough to deal with. We um, probably disappointed a lot of people, a lot of fans that expected more of us, which 
doesn't feel great and we also expect more uh, from ourselves so um, it's, uh, it's not a happy day don't linger on the disappointment of the fans because I know that they do still love you I'm sure the key arena will remind you of that okay Zai I don't want to keep you much longer one final opportunity to talk to the people that at home the people here in the arena your fans your family whatever you want we uh, appreciate you a lot even though this TI wasn't was an RTI but didn't perform like we had hoped to uh, we still appreciate that you came out to support us and hopefully you'll continue supporting us in the future and we'll hopefully have uh, better results ladies and gentlemen man of no introductions it is of course Zai of evil geniuses one more time let's make some noise thank you machine and thank you Zai three TIs in a row evil geniuses in the top three and although unfortunately getting knocked out before top eight, EG has a loyal fan base, and of course this team always will have great outcomes in the future. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's uh, it is very surprising to see them already. Like uh, I was expecting them to go very far, but uh, I can understand kind of as I what he's saying. Um, it did look a bit like uh, they weren't really playing to win. They, it, from my point of view at least, it's like Empire have that thing where. They're hungry. They want to play, you know. They're yeah. coming there. They're, they're ready to play EG. They know, like, everyone kind of knows that, you know, EG is on paper. They're a better team, and everyone kind of expects them. But Empire, they really want it, you know. Def today, they definitely wanted it more than EG. And if that's the case, then at a tournament like this, it's not forgiving, you know. You, I, you lose this game, then... I remember you commented on, like, the looks of the players going yeah. back into the booths. Right, yeah. I more. Well, yeah, so... Um, Sometimes I feel like after like after the first game, I saw on, on some of the EVG players' faces, like they just had this look of I don't know, I don't I don't know how to put it, but it's like a look of someone who's not ready to show up and play. You know, it's not a it's not a hungry look. They looked they looked a bit defeated. When I looked at Liquid earlier, for example, when they were playing like they had lost one game game one or something, then they were still they came back like in the second game and you know you could see there were still all smiles and they kinda turned it around and it, ha it, it went well for them, but, but to me, it just looked like EG were, they were kind of, you know, the morale was very low. TI, of course, known for its upsets. OG, a team that fell earlier, <laughs> went on to accumulate four total majors under their belt. And, of course, the team that is moving on to next round, Team Empire. We got Casey with Ghost Stick to talk a little bit about the incredible win they just pulled off. Boy, you said it, incredible win. Ghost Stick, you sat down and I asked you this question. You and I sat down for an interview one week ago. Did you, was there any part of you at that time that thought, we're gonna be sitting here talking about us beating EG in a week? No, no way I were thinking about that. Like we were trying to find our game with a standing, with Rezo, we were struggling as, as this time, as the time I mean. Uh, but now I think we're in a good point, Resolution helping us really well. Uh, he gives us all experience which he had uh, previous TI and I'm really happy that we managed to beat EG when no one believed in us uh, probably. What do you want to say about EG and the way that they played here tonight? Because these were these were some really great games that we saw on the TI main stage. Yeah, well, I think it was a bad day for them. Uh, they beat us in group stage without any chances. We were preparing for them really well uh, before this match. And I think we just kind of outdrafted them, maybe somewhere played, but just a bad day for them. Feel sad for them. You mentioned resolution. You added him last second. Yeah. A lot of teams that we're seeing here on the main stage have been practicing together, playing together, living together for months on end. You did not have that much time to come <laughs> together. Why do you think you were able to become cohesive and, and make it work so far? I don't know. He has a really great experience. Like He can adapt to any play style, and we adapted to him, kind of. Uh, we, we were finding our game like uh, for two days of a group stage which we played. Uh, it was a tough days for us in a group stage, but after that, uh, uh, we reached a point where we're playing uh, like a good team. And I think it's working uh, really well for us. We talked to Resolution yesterday, and I think between that and just watching your style of play, there's kind of a sense of carefreeness in the way that you're handling it. You don't seem to be feeling the pressure the mm -hmm. way the other teams are. Not to say that you're not, but, but how is your approach to TI perhaps helping you battle that pressure? Well, I, kinda, I feel pressure before the games, like before I go to the booth. Like, um, I don't know. And when the game starts, uh, there is no pressure for me and for all of my teammates. I hope so. So it's kind of there is no like uh, a way that I'm fixing a, a pressure. It's just goes like that. 
And now you're undefeated on TI main stage so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It feels happy. <laughs> Does it? Yeah, it's it feels. Can you describe the moment that you were playing just now in that series where you thought, yeah. "Oh my, oh my gosh, this is this is happening." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something like that. Yeah, in my head, like, "Oh my gosh, I win in EG. Like, it is happening in the main stage. Uh, like, it was really, really good feeling. I never feel felt like that." And you can tell there's so much respect between the two teams. Mm -hmm. So I know that that makes it a little bit harder for both of you because, I mean, there, everybody who's here deserves to be here. But now you've got to set your sights next. Liquid, wh what are you thinking as you as you prepare to face Liquid? Uh, before a playoff, we kind of struggled playing against them. Like, they were undefeated in our scrims when we played versus them. Uh, I don't know, we didn't um, think about playing versus Liquid yet. So we will think later on. But I hope uh, we'll do our best. Even though EG came in as favorites to win tonight, they have a lot of fans out there. You guys have your fans as well. Is there anything that you want to say to them and, and people who are who are sticking with you guys and now they realize that you're going really, really far? Yeah, I want to say uh, hello to all fans who came to Key Arena and cheering for us and watching in the uh, internet, like in, at sitting at ho in home. It's late night in Russia. Like, you know, it's really hard for them to watch this game. Like, it's a pleasure for us to play uh, like this, uh, to give you emotions which you receive when you're watching these games. Congratulations. Thanks. I feel like you need to let out something. Do you feel, <laughs> what do you, where do you go from uh, here? How do you, how do you let out all that energy that you just had on stage there? Uh, I will scream uh, uh, if we win Liquid, something like that. Okay. I, I hope so. Save the scream for yeah, later. Yeah, I, I will save it Sounds for good. later. Yeah. Thank you so much. Congratulations once again, Ghost Stick. Really appreciate it. All right, back to you guys. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Ghost Stick, and congratulations once again. I mean, at this point, we now see in the upper bracket, IG versus Newbie. LGD Forever Young, a.k.a. LFY, going up against Virtus Pro. And we have Team Liquid against Team Empire that will be happening in a few days. Just remarkable results. It's, it's TI, man. Anything can happen. <laughs> it, yeah, right. like, that's how it is, you know? It, like, people talk about it all year, and you say anything can happen at TI, and I feel like it always proves to be true. You know, you have these teams that all year long, they do really well. We've seen EG. They've had some pretty good results throughout the year. And, you know, now they're gone. And Empire, they've been looking shaky, but look at them, you know? They're they did man. not look shaky in those games at all. Nope. What were the highlights of the day for you? Tomato, let's start with you. Uh, highlights of the day. Wow, that Empire game was pretty fun to watch. I, I enjoy the, the, the teams, like, come together so well. Like, each one of them is playing better and better each game. It's like, when I saw them during group stage, they were like super weak, like only Wrestle was carrying them. And now it's like everyone's yeah. making plays. And they're like, Gostik's making plays here, Roger's making plays. Really fun to watch. It's hard to pick an all-star when yeah, you're yeah. Empire game. Like the whole game was exciting. This is like my favorite match. What about you, Merlini? I think the hunger from the players. I think like most of the players that have already won a TI are out now. And I, I think our chances of getting a repeat winner are Almost zero? It's is it newbie, OG. You, or just players, player-wise, just S4, oh, maybe? Right. I think S4 is like the only one left. We started with, I believe, five at the start. And yeah. you can tell, like, all yeah, these guys... Yeah, but newbie and OG, uh, they are the ones that have players left. Like, Faith, mm -hmm. Faith oh, yeah, and Faith. S4, those are the two. I think there were a lot more, and I think these teams that haven't won a TI before, they're just, they just want this so badly. And you can tell from the way that they play, from the way that they look, from the way they yeah. enter the boost. Yeah. What about for you, PyCat? Um, what stood out? Well, like like Tomato said, I, I really enjoyed this last game. I thought it was one of the most interesting games that we've seen today. It was it was like, yeah, it was a very even game up until the like the very last point. I think I feel like yeah. anything kind of could have happened. The um, yeah, no, I would have to say that th that's my favorite game of today. Well, I know that there's a whole lot of fans who have been sticking it through the entire day. We've been going for almost 12 hours straight. And Slax is out with some of them to say goodbye for the night. Slax, take it away. Hey, guys. We are outside in the arena. Everybody is going home. The cars are leaving. The stadium is emptying. Em emptying? Emptying? Oh, whatever. Thank you. <laughs> but the boys... I'm seeing a lot of sad faces out here, but I'm seeing a lot of happy ones too. An exciting game of Dota from everybody. A lot of favorites went home, but overall, we still saw some pretty good Dota, right everybody? Huh? Yeah! But we're gonna see more tomorrow, right? Yeah! So they're not, their hearts are not broken, because we all win when we see excellent Dota played, and that's what we saw here today, and we will see more of it tomorrow on more TI, correct? Yes!
Captain! Hearts are mended. Everything's fine out here. <laughs> Thanks for fixing all the problems, Slacks. Thank you. Of course, there's so many teams that come into this event that have fans behind them hoping that they'll be able to push through to the finals. And when that heartbreak sets in, yes, it hurts. But you know what? As the days go on, new fans are formed because the teams thus far have been showcasing just extraordinary skill. Let's take one more look at the brackets. Talk about the big matches that are going to be happening tomorrow. In particular, in that lower bracket, we have TNC going up against OG in LGD versus Digital Chaos. I mean, we got to talk about TNC OG, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the repeat of last year. You got to see, like, it's, it's again, it's the fight for top eight. Are TNC going to do it like they did last year when they knocked OG out? Or is this going to be the, the TI where OG actually, you know, pushing through that top eight and then maybe go further? It's, I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to that. Yeah, I mean, OG did showcase almost a comfort, using a lot of chat wheels and their games against, you know, in that first round. They were feeling pretty good, it seemed, in their conversations, they seemed pretty good. What about in terms of the winner's bracket? We will be doing that at the end of the day, Invictus Gaming versus Newbie and LFY versus Virtus Pro. I'm excited for both of those games. Like, yeah. that's not the upper bracket that we all saw, but after the way that these teams play, like IG and Newbie, they look like the, the best that they've been in the past like six, seven, eight months. And I'm really excited to see them play. And really low expectations, actually, for both of them. But now I'm like, oh, man, they, these guys could go all the way. Yeah, I mean, so many of the Chinese teams being so impressive. And Virtus Pro, the only non-Chinese team still remaining in the winner's stages. So let me just say to all of you who came out today, to all of you who tuned in on the stream, thank you so much for coming out. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And have a great night. Cheers.